Hey guys, Ivan here, and I have an interesting topic for you today. This is actually fan requested. One of my viewers commented that I should make a video in which I will be basically comparing Chris Bumstead to the original classic bodybuilders, to the golden era bodybuilders, to the most aesthetic bodybuilders of all time, that were competing during the 60s, 70s, 80s maybe, and maybe even 50s. So I have a bunch of them, I have a list right here, and uh, let's go with the first one right here in the photo, of course, that will be Arnold Schwarzenegger. Why Arnold? Well, because he resembles Chris Bumstead in a couple of uh, aspects, so firstly, not arms. Definitely, definitely not arms. Arnold's arms, especially biceps, were some of the best biceps in the history of the world. So while Arnold is definitely way better in the arms, which is a very important factor, Chris is actually leading in some other regards, such as the wee taper, the small waist, and the quads. As far as their chest, they both have an amazingly developed chest, but I think Arnold is just bigger, because he was an open-class bodybuilder after all. I need to rewind a little to go back to why I'm actually doing this topic, and the reason is, uh, why did I create the classic physique division? Because we were missing this kind of golden era classic physiques. I guess that's the reason, and we are all actually hoping that that's the reason. And this year, the Mr. Olympia 2019, we actually kind of saw that to be the case. Because they gave the title to Chris Bumstead over guys like uh, George Peterson, who was much bigger and more dense. And also Brion Aisley, who was the same thing. But they actually gave it to Chris because he was more classic. He won more mandatory poses in classic physique divisions, such as abs and thighs with an amazing vacuum, side chest and favorite classic pose because he is more classic. So he deserved that title and that's what classic physique is today. So we're gonna compare only him to the most classic golden era old school bodybuilders. And again, we are starting with Arnold. So right here you can see that they're actually looking pretty close and they are similar height, maybe even the same height. But it's very hard to challenge Arnold in the front double bicep pose because that's a very dominant pose for Arnold, even though his legs are not as big. Still, he looks amazing in this pose, especially if you're comparing classy bodybuilders, if you're taking those aesthetics into consideration. Just having small waist and pretty classical lines doesn't make you more classic. What it takes is actually some mass, some muscle. Chris definitely has it, but Arnold has more. Yeah, Chris has better physique for modern bodybuilding, probably, because he's more complete. He has developed and shredded glutes, bigger legs. But uh, if you're talking about who is more classic, I would always go with Arnold because of those biceps and the arms and the chest and everything pretty much. The whole presentation of Arnold was just almost perfect with all those imperfections. Arnold's side chest was one of the best side chest poses ever because arguably Arnold has the most developed chest of all time, even considering the modern era bodybuilders, not classic physique competitors. You can also notice Frank Colombo in the background miring Arnold's gains, and I'm gonna mention him as well. If the competition was held today, and if Arnold was a no-name guy, if he showed up the way he was showing up at the Mr. Olympia back in the 70s and, and in the 1980, Arnold would lose. I think Chris would win because he's more conditioned and more complete for today's modern era bodybuilding standards and classic physics standards as well. Chris has so many imperfections and they are actually making his physique unique. That pretty much goes for every bodybuilder. But if you take a look at his physique right here, you will notice weak biceps and you will actually notice them that they are weak and you will criticize him for it. In Arnold's case, you won't even notice his weak points. You will not even notice that his triceps are less dominant than his biceps. You probably won't notice that his waist is not as small and that his legs are not as big. But he worked on uh, fixing those as much as possible, so he got them to a very good level. Still, they were his flaws, but they made his physique look amazing, extraordinary. One of the best physiques of all time. If Arnold was competing today, I'm sure he wouldn't do classic, and he actually said it in an interview with uh, Nick Strike the Power at the Arnold Classic, he said that he would do the Open. How would he do in the Open with his height? Probably not so well, but in the Classic, if he actually made the weight, I'm sure he would be the champion if he actually got conditioned as the other guys are. What do you guys think? I just couldn't move on unless I mentioned my favorite aesthetic bodybuilder of all time, Bob Paris. I think this guy has the most aesthetically pleasing physique of all bodybuilders of all eras, including modern bodybuilding, including 50s and 40s or whatever. This guy was just flawless when it comes to aesthetics. 
As Louis Marco used to say back in the day, it's not too busy, and I exactly know what he meant by that. Everything is where it should be, and it's just enough muscle. Me personally, I prefer Jay Cutler's physique and Ronnie Coleman's, but if we're talking about aesthetics in bodybuilding, this is the, the, the pinnacle, the blueprint. This is what it should be. This is ideal, I mean, this is basically flawless. If we are talking about aesthetics in bodybuilding, I'm sure you're recognizing this pose. It is a part of Chris Bumstead's uh, posing routine, and he looks damn good in it. I don't think anybody else can pull it this well. Although, it's still not perfect, it's still not Bob Paris level. Aside from being the most aesthetic bodybuilder of all time, he is also one of the, if not the best poser of all time. Not just that he was posing so gracefully, but he understood posing so well. If you take a look at their legs here, for example, Bob's left leg is straight, and it looks much better than Chris's left leg that is not exactly straight, it's a little bit bent forward. And that's all that's straight about Bob, he's gay actually. <laughs> but if you take a look at their right legs, you will see that Chris is bigger and more conditioned and more complete as far as muscular development. But because Bob is such a master of posing, he looks better and his hamstrings actually looking bigger here. Conditioning is something that shouldn't be ignored, and it wouldn't be ignored when it comes to judging at today's modern bodybuilding, but back in the 80s, it wasn't so important as it is today, and the standards weren't as high as they are today. If Bob competed today, I'm sure he would bring much better conditioning than this. So we kind of need to ignore that part. Then if you take a look at their upper bodies, you will see that Bob's upper body is sort of twisted forward, facing camera a little bit more than Chris's upper body, which also looks better. And then, I'm mentioning it at the end, but it's probably the most visible part, the most visible difference in these two physiques, and that's biceps. Chris's biceps are just a mess, they are just genetically inserted horribly, and Bob's biceps are perfect, just perfect. So I would go with Bob when it comes to aesthetics. When I started this video, I said that Chris Bumstead resembles Arnold Schwarzenegger in many regards but I would say that he's closer to Bob Paris. If anybody comes close to Bob's aesthetics, the way of posing, and the ability to hit these kind of aesthetic classical poses, that would be Chris. That would be Chris, and uh, he's amazing because of that. But is he better than Bob when it comes to being classic? I would not say so, no. Here is another variation of the same pose pretty much, but only this time they are having their arms behind their heads. And here you can notice that the right leg is actually not so straight as it was in the previous pose, and here it looks even better than the previous one, it looks super aesthetic. Just look at Bob here, you need to admire these aesthetics, because this is just, this is just aesthetically another level, over 9000, seriously. And then you take a look at Chris and it's not as good, it's not as perfect. Bob is just nailing it right here, and Chris is trying to emulate his posing, which is awesome, and he's doing a great job, but he's not as good, because this was his posing. He understood his body so well, and I'm honestly amazed how good his understanding of posing in his own body, with his own structure and genetics, was. Because he was a genius because of this, honestly. I love his physique, it's perfect, aesthetically. If you say words like uh, classic bodybuilding, aesthetics, old school, you cannot forget Frank Zane. He is basically the representation of classical lines. He was competing against guys like Arnold and uh, Franco Colombo and Tom Platz and so on, and these guys were much bigger than him, but he chose to stay smaller and to stay aesthetic, and it paid out. He won the Mr. Olympia multiple times. This three times Mr. Olympia winner, Frank Zane, was known for basically one thing more so than any other thing, and that was his amazing, amazing vacuum. That vacuum stood out always, and he was known for it back then, he's known for it today. Guess who from today's modern bodybuilding or classic physique he has a vacuum similar to his? Yeah, yeah, that's Chris, obviously, right here you can see it, and uh, he is probably one of the few guys who have this kind of wide ribcage, combined with a small waist, and the ability to hit really deep vacuum, really deep. It's probably not deeper than Frank's, but it's very deep, on Chris. Now, who do you think looks better here? That's a good question. Well, Frank Zane, me personally, I find him extremely aesthetic, but mainly in this pose right here. It really does look amazing, but if you take a look at their quads, it's a huge difference. 
Yes, Frank is posing kind of differently with his legs. He's not facing his feet outwards. He's actually keeping them close together and facing forward, which creates a little bit less of an illusion of having huge legs. But back in the day, huge legs weren't the priority. Today, they are very, very important. And back in the day, it was more important to have a better weed taper than huge legs. The axe taper wasn't that important. So that's how Frank did it. But even if he posed like Chris, I don't think he would have as big legs, because he didn't really try to get them that big. Again, it wasn't a priority. But if you take a look at their vacuum, you can see that uh, the skin that is on the edge of their ribs looks sharper on Frank Zane. It looks like uh, Frank was more conditioned, and the uh, separations and the lines on, the, on, on Frank's lats also, and biceps as well. And stomach too. It seems like Frank was more shredded. But that's not the case in the legs. Is it because he didn't trade them hard enough? Because they weren't important? He didn't really pay attention to them? Or was Chris actually more conditioned? I'm not sure. But as far as the upper body, Frank looks more conditioned here. Also, you need to take into consideration the fact that all these old photos are from magazines and uh, they are all edited. They all have filters and all kinds of enhancements were done to them. And Chris's pick right here was is just a raw pick. So it wasn't filtered, it wasn't touched. But uh, basically, who do you have here? I would go with, uh, with Frank, actually. It looks more aesthetic right here. There is no professional camera coverage of every single show that Frank did, so you can't really see him from all the angles, all the poses, and he was really able to hit his own poses that he thought his body looked best at. For example, this one, sort of a victory pose, from double bicep as well, looks pretty good, pretty decent, probably better than uh, Chris's front double bicep. This side tricep pose also looks amazing, the chest is straighted, the stomach looks very aesthetic, and everything is on point, he looks very good, but then you take a look at this front relaxed pose, and I'm not really super impressed, it doesn't look that aesthetic, that classic, so who the hell knows how aesthetic Frank Zane actually was, if he was compared next to Chris pose for pose, but uh, based on his favorite, the best and most dominant poses, he does look more impressive, yeah. I don't know about you guys, but me personally, when I think about aesthetics in bodybuilding, Frank Zane is my first association. And from all the competitors of today, there is nobody really getting close to Frank Zane's aesthetics other than Chris Bumstead, who is resembling Frank Zane more, that'll be Sadiq Hadjovic, but as far as uh, aesthetics, who is getting close to him, that, that's Chris, yeah. But is he more aesthetic though? That's arguable, you tell me. Alright, so next in line, when it comes to most classic slash aesthetic bodybuilders of all time, of past, of the golden era, would be Danny Padilla. Do you know what his nickname was? It was the Giant Killer, and he's the original Giant Killer. Why is his name Giant Killer? Of course, because he was short. So it's not really easy to compare him to Chris, but when you take a look at this, how much are you admiring his aesthetics, his classic lines? On a scale from 1 to Danny Padilla. <laughs> Basically, I'm just curious, how is it possible that we had such amazing genetic freaks for this kind of aesthetics back in the day, and we don't get so many today? Is it because bodybuilders are destroying their physiques with the drugs, with the style of training, with so much food, or something else, extreme dieting? It could be just conditioning. I don't know, I don't know, but these guys back in the day looked so perfect, so appealing to the eye. This is classic physique 101. If this was a competitor today, I'm pretty sure he would blow away everybody. Of course, he would come a little bit sharper. Back in the day, he didn't have to be sharper than this, but if he competed today, I'm sure with, with the right help, with the right coach, he would get to that level of conditioning and he would probably dominate every single classic physique lineup. Because this is just marvelous. This is amazing. This is pure aesthetics, pure classic lines. Right? You agree with me? We are sort of running out of classic bodybuilders from golden era, but uh, I will just mention a couple of others as well. For example, this man right here, Francis Benfado, who looked amazing, absolutely extraordinary. He was uh, a freak when it comes to aesthetics. Just look at his physique. Really, really good. Better than Chris. Probably more aesthetic. Probably more aesthetic, yeah, because of his arms. Look at those arms. 
I don't know about you guys, but I really like good arms, good and big and full arms, great biceps, great arms overall. Here he was older, he was injured, his right back is torn, so it doesn't look that aesthetic, but when he was younger, he was so aesthetic, one of the most classic bodybuilders of all time. Another bodybuilder who I think also deserves to be one of the most aesthetic and classic bodybuilders of all time would be Lila Brada. And he was from the 80s, so at that point people were getting bigger, you know, bodybuilders were getting bigger, so maybe he's not exactly perfect for classic. His biggest rival was Rich Gaspari, and I definitely wouldn't consider Rich Gaspari classic bodybuilder. He was a freak, he was very short, but he was too wany, he didn't have great aesthetics, you know, muscle insertions and stuff. But uh, Lila Brada absolutely did. He was very, very aesthetic. And from that era, the guy who was beating them all every single year was Lee Haney. Should we consider Lee Haney a classic bodybuilder? Maybe he will consider this an insult because he's definitely too big to compete in classic today. But he was last of the Mohicans. He was definitely the last man standing when it came to aesthetics in bodybuilding. After him, the original mass monster Dorian Yates showed up and from that point on, bodybuilders will just keep getting bigger and bigger, which I love, but it's not aesthetic, it's not classic. Lee Haney was aesthetic. He was very, very aesthetic, very, very classic. A little bit too big, maybe, but uh, very, very good. Compared to Chris Bumstead, it's not really fair to compare them because this man was much bigger and he was a Mr. Olympia in the Open, just like Arnold, but he was much bigger and much more complete than Arnold. And that's the thing that resembles modern bodybuilding, the completeness. This man had legs, very good legs. He wasn't really showing glutes, that starts with Dorian, but uh, he had very good legs, very good, very, very, very good back. And as you can see right here, his lats were huge. But he was very aesthetic as well, so you tell me, you think he's classic? I think he's just on the verge, just between classic and a monster, a mass monster. There is another very, very aesthetic, very classic bodybuilder back from the 70s, back from the Arnold's era. But you can't really find too many photos of his aside from this pose right here, this side tricep. That uh, Terence Ruffin, who just won Niagara Falls, is uh, copying and resembling quite well. And basically Serge Nobre in this photo right here, in this pose right here, and basically all the photos in this pose, side tricep or so-called front tricep, he looks amazing, he looks extremely classic. Is he more a classic than Chris? Yes, yes I think so, especially in this one. Just look at the proportions, the arms and chest to waist and the rest of the body ratio. It's amazing, it's crazy, it's insane, it's very aesthetic. And very, very classic, don't you think? Sergio Olivia looks very classic and aesthetic in this pose, but no, he was too big. He was just too big. I love the Jay Cutler type of physiques. Ronnie Coleman as well. But uh, this is not classic. This is a mass monster. He was out of his time because look at those arms. Look at this mass. He was huge. He was huge. Definitely not classic. He was out of his time. He was big. He was a monster freak. What about Steve Reeves, all the way back in the 50s? Honestly, I don't get the fuzz about this guy. I mean, sure, for 50s and for most likely being natural, he is amazing, sure. But uh, compared to the likes of Chris Baumstead, it's not even a comparison. I mean, this guy was probably natural. He looks natural. So I don't think uh, he can be considered one of the top classic physique guys. But yeah, considering the fact that this is 50s, 70 years ago, Probably no steroids. Yeah, sure, he was amazing, but not comparable to Chris. What about Reg Park? Well, also 50s and probably natural. And he was really amazing for being natural. He was definitely more genetically gifted than Steve Reeves. And for those years, he was amazing, but again, not comparable to Chris Bumstead. I said I'm gonna mention Frank Colombo and Tom Platt is also here as well. Not classic at all. Uh, Lou Ferrigno also pretty classic, but not that much. He actually flourished later in the 90s when he came much, much bigger. And the most certainly not classic at all. Very good, but not classic. Robbie Robinson, pretty classic, but still a bit of a freak. You know, he was also huge, sort of like uh, Sergio Oliva, um, but a bit better bicep peaks. <laughs> and uh, 40 years later, we come to this. How did bodybuilding evolve to something like this? I don't even want to know. I don't even want to think about it. It's just horrible. It's just disaster. But it is what it is. Let's just uh, keep remembering the nice stuff, the classical stuff. 
and the top of the top when it comes to the Open. This is Greg Kovacs, and uh, he did not look good, especially when he was older. <laughs> not looking good is putting it mildly. I would say a lot of things, but I'm not gonna. He's dead. This here on the right is Boston Lloyd, who is known for destroying his physique with gear because he didn't believe he had the genetics for it and he did basically literally every drug that could help you look better on the planet. He did it and he destroyed his physique absolutely. The amounts that he was using were astronomical. As you can see right here, this is his father on the left. So he does have pretty good genetics. His father was very, very classic, very aesthetic. So if Boston was more consistent and if he put in a couple of, uh, not only years, but probably a decade or two, he would probably be a good bodybuilder, probably would turn pro. Would he ever be a top pro? Probably not, but I think he would turn pro. It's not that hard just to win a show, a pro qualifier. There is so many of them that are not really that hard to win. And he is definitely made for classic, not for the open, but with all the drugs and synthol and everything, he destroyed his physique for classic physique and uh, now he's saying bad stuff about it but he knows he would do horribly in it, as well as he would do horribly in the open, so he made a mistake with that. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. You have Chris Bumstead, who is your current most classic bodybuilder of today. I think he is, absolutely. I think his physique is amazing. He is better than many classic old-school era bodybuilders, but there are many that are actually better than him, in my opinion. If you guys agree with me, tell me down below or like the video. If you disagree, tell me about that as well. And dislike the video if you must, but please don't do that. Also, subscribe for more bodybuilding related content. And if you have any ideas for future videos, tell me down below in the comment section. I will try to read them all. If I find something interesting, I will write it down and in the future I will make a video about it. So once again, guys, thank you very, very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, once again, like it and subscribe. All the best, guys. Bye-bye.